Chicago, you're in the place to be. It's time for Can TV's LOL Chicago. Make some noise for your host, Mr. Mars Hey, everybody. Welcome out to Can TV's LOL Chicago. I'm your host, Mars Timms. Who's enjoying the cold weather and snow out there? Ooh, all right, a couple people, maybe one person. All right, yeah, some people woke up this morning. They're like, ooh, it's, it's snow outside. Guess I'm calling in to work today. Ooh. <coughs> some of us woke up like, nope. I'm just laying right here on this couch because I ain't got shit to do anyway, right? <laughs> that was me. That was absolutely me. See, that's my whole thing with dying and not wanting to drown because water is always too cold. And I was like, I don't want to be pinned in cold water just like, oh, this is too cold to die like this. Like, if the, maybe it was like tropical water. Like, I'd rather die in a fire. Because then at least I can have shorts on and stuff. <laughs> I'd be like, this is the way to do it. Yeah, yeah, some sunscreen. Woo, it's hot, it's getting hotter in here. But I'd definitely rather go in a fire than by drowning or like freezing to death too. Even in the movies, they make like freezing to death seem cool because they're like, maybe somebody will find your body frozen in the snow and we can bring you back to life. <laughs> if I'm frozen, I don't want to be brought back to life. Like they'd be like, ooh, it's, it's just too cold to bring me back like this. I, no, mm mm, because then y'all blue and like. You know, when you get frostbite, your fingers get all black and they gotta cut them off and stuff like that. No, you burn me up in a fire, you bring me back like that, be like, oh, you look like hell, look like you've been on a fire. Yeah, but I feel good, I'm awfully warm. <laughs> That's the way I wanna go. Actually, I don't wanna go like any of those ways. I wanna go nice and peacefully in my sleep, being smothered by an overweight woman. That's. <laughs> <laughs> you want to talk about a warm way to go. Woo! Come on, girl, put it all on me. <laughs> it's like getting suffocated in a comforter. That's the way I want to go out. <laughs> like a whole bed full. It's like when people like go and you see like pictures of them, they got puppies crawling all over them. Like, oh, this is the best that life can get. So many puppies. That's where I'm like just big women just like crawling all over me. Just like, oh, it's like the blob of just being smothered in like silly putty or something like that. <laughs> Like that old Nickelodeon TV show and they like dump the gack on people. That's the way I wanted to be. Just like, just waves and waves of big women just like splashing me like, like it's like a wrestling match and they like jumping off the third, the top rope. It's just like, splash! And I'm just like, yeah! Oh, keep me coming. Yeah! You gotta make them suffocation noises. Those would be my last words. Y'all mm. mm. yeah. <laughs> nasty. I like it. Good. Good. So, uh, Can TV, LOL Chicago. We got a great lineup for you all tonight. Uh, some of Chicago's bright and funniest comedians hitting this stage. First up, ladies and gentlemen, coming to the stage, he performs all over the Midwest, uh, probably all over North America. He runs a weekly show out in Oak Park at Hamburger Mary's. A big round of applause for Tyler Fowler. I would round of applause for Mars, the host. Yeah, give it up for him, yes. Yeah, also make some noise for the problems you clearly have at home that you all came out in this weather. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> Y'all needed an escape. That's good. Uh, I'm excited to be here, man. This is actually my Halloween costume. This exact outfit is what I wore on Halloween. Yeah. I went as the scariest monster of all, the straight white man. Boo! Oh. <laughs> Scary, right? Because some monsters, like, stalk their victims. This one just plays the victim. Oh. <laughs> Scary, right? It's good because it's a versatile costume. Right now, evil supervillain, straight white man. Pop up the collar, it's his evil sidekick, frat boy. <laughs> yeah. You guys know, <laughs> gotta wait for you to get the joke, thanks for coming. Uh, you guys know if you see five or more geese together, that's a flock of geese, right? Five or more dudes who look like me, scientifically, is a fraternity. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, seven or more acapella group, scarier, you know? <laughs> I actually joined a fraternity in college, and it's not as white as it sounds. Uh, we, actually won, we actually won an award for being the most diverse fraternity on campus, yeah, because we had one black member and one gay member. Yeah, and they were the same guy. <laughs> yeah. They look at us like, that is diversity, I guess. Yeah. But who am I to make fun of white people, right? These lights aren't even on. I just glow in the dark, okay? That's how pale I am. That's why I don't mind the winter. I hate going to the beach. It's just not that fun when you're this pale. Like, I can't tell you how many times I've been to the beach and I've been stepped on. Yeah, because someone took one look at my skin like, hey, that's just more sand. <laughs> that's all. Uh, my brother's a doctor. So you think, obviously, like, he is the favorite son, right? Uh, but his doctorate is in music education. <laughs> And you guys, that is the only time that stand-up comedian beats doctor. <laughs> right, because if he's on a plane and somebody screams out, is there a doctor on board? He says, yes. Uh, but then when they ask, what's your specialty? He has to say, the trumpet. <laughs> yeah, and then whoever needed help has to be like, actually, can someone go ahead and help that guy because he thinks he's a real doctor. I think that is where the help is needed. My brother and his wife are about to have a baby, and nobody asked me. I'm not ready, but they're going to go ahead with it. They're pretty excited. Uh, I think they're going to do it. I'm not ready to be an uncle. I don't even know how to hold the baby. Somebody tried to explain it. And they go, oh, it's just like holding the football. I was like, great. Now I know less how to hold a baby. Yeah, yeah. Made this harder for both of us. Yeah. This is going to come as a shock to you guys. I'm not a very athletic guy. What? Uh, I hit a new low the other day. I confidently told someone that I was batting 100. Uh, yeah, he knows what I didn't. Uh, the standard of excellence is batting a thousand. I did not know that. Yeah. I got called in to talk to my boss. Someone's like, oh my God, do you think you're getting fired? I was like, no way. I've been batting 100 this week. <laughs> like, man, he is for sure getting fired, but he is confident about it. <laughs> he's uh, he's going to look good doing it. I think that's what matters, you know? I see a lot of couples working out together at my gym. I think that's kind of confusing, right? I'm like, guys, you're done. You got somebody. Go home, right? Like, <laughs> you don't win a marathon, then keep running. You know? like, like me, I'm at the gym because I'm lonely, right? If I look dateable, I would be on dates, not at spring training. You know? <laughs> me and this guy at the gym alone. <laughs> You can relate to this. I'm not impressed by couples that exercise together because I'm like, sure, your girlfriend can do more squats than me, uh, but I'm carrying the weight of my own emotional baggage solo. <laughs> yeah. It's just that every day is leg day when you are dead weight. You know? <laughs> very different. Yeah, laugh with me or laugh at me. It feels the same up here. So do whatever feels right for you guys. You know? I hate it when good looking guys are also nice. Yeah. <laughs> Because I'm like, you've got to pick one, okay? Because <laughs> nice is kind of our thing, and frankly, it is all we have, you know? Like, personally, I don't think I'm a bad-looking guy. A lot of other people do, and they, they will tell me. Uh, my female friends say it like this. They go, Tyler, you are so funny. Yeah. <laughs> it's tough to date me because my personality can best be described as an easy-bake oven. Right? On the outside, it looks like the real thing. Inside, hollow shell. <laughs> yeah. You guys remember the Easy Bake Oven, right? It was a lamp. It basically sums it up. It was just a lamp. Uh, also baked a cake the size of a Triscuit in about 16 hours, if you remember that. Yeah. That's a real crackhead amount of cake for a little kid. They're like, I, I just need a little cake. I don't care how bad it is. I don't care how small it is. I don't care how bad it tastes. Just give me a little cake. You know? Heat up Bisquick in our light bulb. I don't care. You know? I do think it's a good educational toy for kids, right? Teaching them what to expect in adult life. It's a lot of hard work, a lot of effort. When you finally get what you've worked so hard for, very disappointing. Uh, it's going to be a big old letdown, you know? Uh, just like the end of that joke. Thanks for sticking around for it. Good. <laughs> oh, man. A lot of people say this. They say you can tell a happy couple because they don't have to be together all the time, right? Like the happiest couples, they spend lots of time apart. So my girlfriend and I tried that. We did this thing. We spent so little time together that we actually broke up. <laughs> And you guys, she has never been happier. She is so happy. She's having a great time. The first hint that I was lonely was uh, I went shopping at Best Buy uh, just because I knew they would be excited to see anybody. <laughs> yeah. And it worked. I was a hero in there. Yeah. My peak loneliness moment, though, is I used to hate the idea of skydiving uh, until I found out for your first jump, they strap you to an instructor. 
Yeah, because instead of being scared, I was like, whoa, did you say that somebody is going to hold me? <laughs> Let's jump out of that plane. Yeah, I was willing to risk my life just to be the little spoon. <laughs> Of course, somebody pointed out, they go, hey, just because you're tandem skydiving doesn't mean you couldn't die. True. It does mean I couldn't die alone. Yeah. I just don't want to die alone because I don't want to be greeted by my dead family members in heaven and have to explain why even in the afterlife, I can't bring home a nice girl. You know? <laughs> hey, you guys are fun. I'm Tyler. Get up for Mars, your host. Yeah. Hey, everybody. One more big round of applause for Tyler. I like to think that uh, Tyler was like, just the microphone for him. There you go, little fella. <laughs> you laughed way too hard at that. I am a whopping 5'7 uh, today, because uh, it's cold outside and I got uh, heels on. All right, I'm printing it. That's, that's gonna be the new term for uh, short people that like to, to like make their height a little taller. We're printing it, we're printing it out here. R.I.P. Two short people. Okay. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. All right. Coming to the stage. Very funny man. Uh, I love working with this guy all the time. He's everywhere. So keep your eyes out for him. Uh, and I can't think of his uh, social media handles right now. But ladies and gentlemen, a big round of applause for Ty Riggs. <laughs> Oh, what's up, everybody? Hey. hey. Oh, man. I don't care what y'all say. Like, I like the winter. I like it cold, because I get to wear my long sleeves. I get to hide my little ass wrists. <laughs> yeah, I know. They're pathetic. It's whatever. If you see me shaking up here, it's not because I'm nervous. It's because this microphone is heavy as fuck. <laughs> I like y'all. Y'all are a nice crowd. Y'all are pretty chill. Like, yeah. I'm, as you can see, I'm a chill dude also. Super chill, probably too chill. Like, have you ever chilled so hard you lost like three days? <laughs> Went to sleep on Monday, woke up on Thursday, like, God damn. This would be messed up if I had a job. Like, man, it's crazy. I don't know, I think it's the weed. I think it's the weed. Yeah, I smoke a little bit too much. I need to cut back. It's messing with my memory. Last month was my dad's birthday, and I got so high that day that I forgot to wish him happy birthday. Yeah, it's messed up how the tables have turned. <laughs> uh, I'm from, <laughs> it took him a minute. It, it was cool growing up. I mean, I was raised Jehovah Witness. They don't get no more gangster than that. Cause don't nobody shoot at the Jehovah Witnesses. Cause every gangster got a, got a Jehovah Witness auntie, so. <laughs> I was in the safe zone. I was on the block, you know, serving out these pamphlets, you know, in these streets, knocking on doors, ringing doorbells and whatnot. <laughs> Gotta get my street cred up, man, you know? I was also a nerd, which was a bad thing. Like, being a Jehovah's Witness was good. Being a nerd, bad. They don't care what, who you <laughs> worship, they gonna make fun of you. It's, like, I grew up thinking, you know, watching TV, I was thinking like, oh yeah, if I be myself, everybody gonna have to accept it and I'm gonna be happy. Like, no, forget that, kids are cruel. <laughs> Change, conform, <laughs> tell your kids now. <laughs> I was a nerd, man, in high school, I was just getting my ass beat, it was crazy. I remember I was playing Yu-Gi-Oh cards at lunch one day, you know, minding my, my own business, chilling. And this dude walked up, he was like, yo, let me see those real quick. Snatched my cards up, walked over to the garbage can, looked me dead in the eyes, threw them in the trash. There was nothing I could do about it. These wrists weren't gonna protect me. <laughs> Just had to take that L, man. So I left it alone. 10 years later, I get a call from my homie. He's like, yo, you remember Jatez that messed with your cards that day? He got in a car accident and he might not make it. <laughs> yeah. Ain't God good, y'all? <laughs> it took him a minute. I ain't, <laughs> I ain't knocking on them doors for nothing, hell. Uh, it's cuffing season. I took this season out, you know, taking a break, trying to enjoy my singleness. And being single is cool. Like, you, people underestimate being single. Like, you could feed yourself only 
and have enough to tip afterwards. You know, there's no pressure of going out or giving somebody attention that you don't have to give them and stuff. You could watch a movie from beginning to end without interruptions. Who is that? What are they doing? Where are they going? I don't know, this is my first time watching a movie too, damn. I get to watch my favorite genre of movie, horror movies, it's my favorite genre because you don't have to worry about diversity because everybody knows ghosts and serial killers, that's all white people stuff, that's their struggle. <laughs> we have to deal with racism and the police, they have to deal with the ghost in the house that they inherited from their uncle. Like that's, <laughs> it goes full circle. I don't mind it, it's whatever, you know? I don't think we have ghosts like that. We, black people don't have vengeful spirits like that. To think about it, you know? Like you don't see Kunta Kinte coming back for revenge. <laughs> you know, like nah, nigga, I is free. <laughs> he got his foot back, he can read now, like it's, it's good, it's, it's, it's great out here. <laughs> I think the only ghost we got is who? Candyman? Does he really count though? Because cause he only haunted white women. And you had to call him five times. Like, ain't no black woman gonna put in that much effort. If I gotta call him that much, he must not want it. Like. And they did Candyman so bogus, he died in Louisiana and was reborn in the projects of Chicago 200 years later. On, on some Section 8 ghost and shit. Like they forgot his paperwork or something. Woke up in the projects. Like, I was a free man when I was alive. What the hell? Got a trench coat and a U-Haul full of bees. It's crazy. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like ghosts are like roaches for white people. Because if it ain't yours, it came with the house, or your kids been hanging out with the wrong people. <laughs> uh, I got to stop. <laughs> I got to stop talking about white people. White people are cool. I'm new to hanging out with them. Because all the white people out west are usually like, crackheads and, and the police. Like, we don't associate with those. I don't know, man. It's, but I started meeting new white people, started hanging out, you know. I got, uh, I, got, I got warm to them, they warmed up to me, and they started doing stuff around me that they don't do around minorities, like dance. <laughs> yeah, you hear about it on TV and your friends talk about it, but it's not, it, you think white people can't dance, it's not that they can't dance, it's that the music affects their minds and their bodies differently. <laughs> You know? Like when they song comes on, like each limb picks an instrument to dance to. Like that's how it works. You know, when the guitar goes off, their legs start moving. You know, the drums start going off, their arms start shaking. And when the beat drop, you know, got the horses in the back, they just start going crazy. <laughs> I don't know, I feel like white dancing is true freedom. I don't know, man. I try to kick it with them. I try to hang out and, and like, you know, dance with them and whatnot, but I can't. I keep on killing the dance moves and shit. It's like I'm a slave to the beat. I don't... <laughs> Thank you. I'm Ty Riggs, y'all. Keep it going one more time for Ty Riggs. All right, y'all, we're going to keep this show going. Uh, your next comedian, he was overdoing comedy in Greece. He was just up in Canada doing a bunch of shows up there. Uh, and my job here is to make sure I get his name right. A big round of applause for Alex Sakanikis. As you can see, I wore my Tims today. It's big dog season out here, guys, all right? I'm feeling it. I went up to Mars, I was like, what's up, little guy? You know, because Mars, in the five-foot community, the difference between 5'5 five five and 5'7 five is astronomical, all right? To get that extra inch on him, I chested him into the wall today, and he gave me his wallet. It was crazy. He had $3, but it was still a wallet, you know? It's wild. Now, everyone's been killing so far, and I don't mean to bring the show down, but... Um, I got called some real racist recently. Yeah, I had a real racist interaction with someone, yeah. This woman, she called me a dirty little Greek goat fucker, right? Why would you laugh at that? That is a vile thing to call another human being. It's fucked up, right? And it was really awkward too, because she said this 
while I was inside of her, right? And I'm just like, if I'm a dirty little Greek goat fucker, you know, what does that make you? Yeah, she got mad about that one, guys. I'll be real with you. I like that guy. I don't blame her, though. I don't think anybody's born racist. I think you're taught racism. I think people are, like, big corporations teach you to hate things, like, a lot. Like, they really do. They really, like, push a very hateful thing, especially against my people specifically, all right? The short man. Yes, all right. You want to know who hates the short man the most? The biggest anti-Semite of all time. You know who that is? Walt Disney. That's right. It almost came out your mouth. It almost came out your mouth, all right? And it's no better poignantly said than in his most famous story, Snow White and those seven perfectly reasonably sized gentlemen. All right? <laughs> this is a terrible story. I would never let my daughter read or watch because it's about white trash and white privilege, okay? And that's a conundrum, all right? What's the first thing that happens in this movie, dog? What's the first thing that happens, huh? Her stepmom gets angry at how pretty she is and she has to go and get lost in the woods. If that shit doesn't say Alabama, I don't know what does. <laughs> All right, but what happens next, dog? What happens next? She wanders into, mo into the woods, meets seven dudes who incidentally look like me, okay? And she gets put on a work release program, right? She cooks and cleans and takes care of the house and she gets to live there for free. And what's the first thing she does when she gets there? The whitest thing possible. She outsources the work to animals, all right? The day laborers of the Disney universe. She's lost for five minutes and they give her a superpower, right? She whistles and all of a sudden Bambi's folding laundry. At what frequency do birds do dishes, okay? I'm asking for a friend. Yes. Disrespectful. Disrespectful. I know personally if I worked all goddamn day in a diamond mine and I came home and my sheet smelled like deer dick, I would be furious. <laughs> furious. Disrespectful. Look at the way she named them. Like fuckboys you put in your phone. You know what I mean? <laughs> Sleepy. Grumpy. That's the guy with the good dick. Doc. That's who you get your weed for free from. <laughs> it's bullshit, man. It's bullshit. It was a fantasy equivalent of helping a pretty girl move. Because you get nothing out of it in the end. All right? You get worked. Because what happens next, dog? What happens next, okay? This moron eats an apple, and then seven dudes who incidentally look like me have to go murder an old lady with pickaxes, right? And does she end up with any of them? No. No. Who does she end up with, huh? The first tall, dark, handsome, sweet horse to ride in on, castle will take you back to, thick cock and wait too tight to pass, cocksucker comes up and lays a real rapey one right on her lips, right? What I'm saying is he's poor, short, bald, big nose, having ugly motherfuckers got words, y'all. And that's when you realize it's Disney's conspiracy theory against the short man. Yes, stick with me. And what Disney movie does a short man get a happy ending? Wally had to die to get a hug. Quasimodo got dick. Oh, I love Quasimodo. You love him as a friend, all right? The only happy ending for a, a short man in a Disney movie is the old man from Up. And his happy ending is that he didn't have to die alone. Some of you might not have seen Up. It's about a geriatric old man kidnapping a young Korean boy and moving to a country with no extradition laws to chase a giant bird around with another old man. Actually a really good movie. But here's the nail in the coffin. Here's the nail in the coffin that proves my theory. Who does Disney love to work with? Randy Newman. You know Randy Newman? You got a friend in me, skapoodle doo do You got a friend in me, do doodle doo day Wherever you go, wherever you been, when you're miles and miles from your nice warm bed, you know it. You got a friend in me. Sounds like he's trying to bring the world together, right? Sounds like he's trying to bring us all together. You want to know what Randy Newman's first big hit was in 1979? A little ditty called Short People. Let me sing you the intro. It goes, short people got no reason. Short people got no reason to live. That's a real song! It's the anthem to the genocide of my people, folks. 
I'd love to stay and chat with you all more. You guys have been wonderful. Well, I'm Alex Sakonikas. Thank you. Keep me going for Alex Sakonikas. Oh, my goodness. He's princing. He was princing today. We wore them Timberlands just so he could almost be my height. Uh, <laughs> Alex is good. Alex actually wears glasses, and he had the hat and the glasses on, and uh, he took his glasses off just so we didn't look too much alike when he came up here on stage. So I appreciate that, Alex. Uh, so with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, coming to the stage, we're keeping this party rolling. This guy, hilarious, tours all over the United States. We're lucky he's back here. Tyler Ross. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I do that. I do a little, a little touring, and I also see a therapist. Yeah, mental health, what? Uh, I love my therapist, but uh, I don't always agree with what she said. Uh, she, she told me my biggest problem is my need for affirmation. And like, I don't know, clap really quick if you think I have a problem needing affirmation. Okay, I'm gonna keep seeing her. You guys are right, all right. <laughs> I, don't, I don't always feel like I know the right answer to these kind of things. I, uh, I actually work at an elementary school and I'm constantly um, being asked questions about life that just don't have an answer, right? Like we've all figured out, life is kind of a huge bummer most of the time. But a five-year-old said the most real thing I've ever heard said about life. And she, she said it crying more than I've ever seen a human being cry. It was like, it was like a sorority rush week level of crying, right? And I'll never forget the words this kid said to me. She was just like, Mr. Tyler, no one's making me happy right now. And how am I supposed to tell her like, yeah, that's how it's always gonna be. <laughs> I don't know, download Candy Crush or watch Netflix a lot like I do. I don't know what to tell you. Um, but a little more about me. I, uh, I grew up in a family, grew up in a family, pretty brave. Um, uh, I don't have any kids of my own, but my dad has kids. I'm one of them. And uh, he, it was weird because he just had, he, he had more kids when he got remarried. And it was only weird because of the timing of it. Um, I was 21 at the time. And at 21, you shouldn't be getting new siblings. <laughs> you should be accidentally having children of your own. <laughs> like an adult, right? <laughs> And like, I, I don't go home very often to see him. He, he lives in Ohio. I'm from Ohio or, originally, not to brag. And uh, <laughs> like, I didn't go home last year for Christmas. I had, a, I had a friend's Christmas. And if you don't know what that is, that's just where one woman in her 30s will cook for a bunch of people. <laughs> because she'll never have a family of her own. And, uh, <laughs> and sometimes people think that's mean of me to say. Um, but it's actually a lot meaner that th some of you thought of a specific person as soon as I said that joke. <laughs> like some people in their head were like, ooh, Molly is kind of sad. <laughs> we should have invited her tonight. Her cats could use a break. Uh, <laughs> but like the last time I was home, it was, uh, I was home, we were having a surprise 80th birthday party for my grandfather. Risky, right? <laughs> Like, it could have easily turned into a surprise funeral planning for my grandfather, right? And while I was there, my dad kind of caught me off guard. He's like, you know, you need to start thinking about having children because who's going to take care of you when you get older? I was like, wow, dad. Do you think we have that agreement? Because um, I've overdrafted my account three times this month. I don't know who I'm supposed to be taking care of, you know? It's like, at this point, all I was training to do was, like, tell jokes to you on your deathbed. You know, I'm just going to raise your spirits before you become a spirit. That's me. Um, and I don't mean to complain. I, I mean, it is, like, the most American thing we have, right? Complaining. I think that's, like, we're really fucking good at it. Um, like, I think we, should, honestly, at this point, need to change, like, in God we trust to can I speak to the manager. I think that's fair at this point, right? And, like, we've been good at complaining since our founding fathers made this country, right? Like, their first written document kind of reads like a, like a mean Yelp review about England. <laughs> like, the first sentence in the Constitution says, we seek to form a more perfect union. Which sounds like my mom saying, listen, I've never run a Chili's, but if I did, I'd have more napkins here, okay? <laughs> 
So leave the Yelp review. It's better than voting. Um, I don't know. I know I'm not like a very smart guy. Uh, and I know this because like the most things I learned were through like kids' educational programming, like Mr. Rogers or like Dora or like Blue's Clues. I just wish they had like a more like updated version so I could know what I'm supposed to be doing now at this point in my life. <laughs> like that'd be a great reboot, right? It's like, just like, hi, I'm adult Andy. And today I was sent home for my job for insubordination. <laughs> today we're gonna work on resumes. They're kind of like Bumble profiles for businesses. <laughs> and then next week is our spooky episode. Because we're finally going to open up this letter from the IRS from seven months ago. Spooky! <laughs> and then at the end of it, Netflix wouldn't be like, hey, do you want to keep watching this? It'd be like, hey, you need to keep watching this. <laughs> uh, my name's Tyler Ross. Thank you guys so much. <laughs> And that was Tyler Ross. All right. Who's keeping track of the people with T-Y to start their names out? If you counted three, you are correct. All right. So coming to the stage, performs all over the U.S. She's one of my favorites here in Chicago. Ladies and gentlemen, she has a cool name, just like me. And she's hilarious. A big round of applause for Soli Santos. So great to be here. Uh, I am a, a native Chicagoan. Any natives in the house? Yeah. So you're all traumatized by the weather, just like I am. Okay. Um, I'm gonna be honest with you. Even though I'm a native Chicagoan, I hate winter. I will never get used to winter. Um, I hate it so much that I hate fall because it precedes winter. Like, that's how much I don't like it, you know. Uh, but I am psychologically prepared to accept the fact that we do have winter about nine months out of the year, okay? So when weather that is happening like right now where it's super cold or like it snowed on Halloween, when people freak out about that stuff, I'm always wondering like, why? Why, if you've been here for a few years, even just a few years, you should be psychologically traumatized like me already to accept the fact that this is the reality of living in the Midwest, okay? I know this because it snowed and hailed the night of my senior prom, okay? May 5th. 19, come on, I'm sorry. It was a horrible year. It was a horrible year. Um, but uh, I do try to skip town, usually after the holidays when we've got nothing left to live for until about May, right? Um, even if it's just for a few days, just to get a break from all the cold and misery. But I'm also Latina. I am specifically Puerto Rican, and so as a Latina, I'm gonna be honest with you, one place I don't plan on going to anytime soon is Arizona. Mm -mm. <laughs> Not with those immigration laws. I may have been born here, but they don't know that, okay? <laughs> now my fellow Puerto Ricans always try to make me feel better about that, because they're usually like, Soli, Puerto Rico is a US Commonwealth. Everyone born in Puerto Rico is a United States citizen. We're safe, girl. <laughs> Unless there's a hurricane, I guess, you know, um, unless there's a hurricane. Too soon? I don't think so. But, you know, I tried to tell her, I said, listen, you know, they actually in Arizona tried to deport a Puerto Rican man because they claimed that he looked Mexican, okay? And I don't know if this was her weak attempt to try to make me feel better, but she was like, Soli, you got nothing to worry about. You could totally pass as Jewish. Okay, some people nodded. I'm not sure how I feel about that. You agreed too quickly. <laughs> there are some advantages, though, to being ethnically ambiguous. Uh, for example, some of my friends, my non-Latino friends, love to tell me whenever some negative news about the Latino community ends up on the news, okay? And it usually happens around June, around the time of the uh, Humble Park uh, Puerto Rican Fest. <laughs> they love to tell me when something bad goes down. I'm not sure why, but they feel the need to tell me. And as a Latina, I feel the need to defend the Latino community in the city of Chicago, because I'm like, you know, there's a lot of great people doing some wonderful 
positive things, adding positive contributions to the city. And so I need to clarify and let them know. And I'm like, listen, I don't know why you're telling me this. I'm Jewish. I don't know why you're saying this to me. <laughs> Whatever I can to wash my hands from the mess. Uh, it is, it's tough. It's tough, you know, living in this city. But, you know, I grew up, I grew up living here. I got street smarts, but I am going to clarify one thing. I have never, ever, nor do I currently live in Humble Park, even though I'm Puerto Rican. Okay, guys? I don't have a problem with Humble Park. I just never grew up there. I didn't grow up there. People have actually tried to take away my Puerto Rican card and tell me I'm not Puerto Rican enough <laughs> because I didn't grow up there, okay? Which I always thought was really weird because I didn't realize a prerequisite for being Puerto Rican was to grow up in a neighborhood named after a German geologist. <laughs> <laughs> know your history, people. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. But living in the city, you get street smarts, you know? Living in the city streets, you learn how to be smart and you learn how to be sassy and learn how to watch your back, right? Okay? Because I did. I grew up in the city. I'm from Wrigleyville. <laughs> I'll fight anybody who doesn't know how to parallel park. Do you understand me? I'm talking to you, suburbanites. I'm, talk I'm talking to you, suburbanites. <laughs> it is, it's tough, you know, it's tough. Uh, <laughs> I grew up in a house with just boys, so I'm a bit of a tomboy. I have three brothers and my dad. And again, being that that's a Latino home, that's like growing up with 40 dudes, okay? <laughs> the testosterone was intense, okay? The machismo was intense. And for those of you that don't know what machismo means, that means toxic masculinity in Spanish. That's what that means. <laughs> it's everywhere. Mm -mm. Uh, my mom was there, but like I said, we were outnumbered, okay? So there was so much testosterone in that house that I started growing facial hair at the age of six. My mother had to take me to go get that thing waxed <laughs> so my first grade friends would stop making fun of me. trauma guys this is all trauma but my my brothers were in sports so I wanted to be in sports right so when I was seven I asked my parents to put me in an after-school sports program you know and again being seven I didn't specify a sport I just assumed they would put me in something cool like gymnastics or soccer they put me in bowling <laughs> on Saturdays between 8 a.m. and 12 p.m. <laughs> Do you know how many years of Saturday morning cartoons I lost on? <laughs> I didn't hate it. I didn't hate it. So after the first year of being on a league, the first of four, okay, I asked my parents for a bowling ball for Christmas. And they gave me one. They gave me a nice eight pound pink glitter monogram ball. But again, I didn't think it through because I had been walking to said bowling alley, which was a mile from the house. Come rain, sleet, snow, it didn't matter. Now, I'm carrying an eight pound ball, bowling for four hours, and walking back with an eight pound ball. Okay, <laughs> let me put this in perspective. It was an eight pound ball, I was eight years old, <laughs> I weighed 45 pounds at the time. Do you know what that does to the body of a little eight-year-old girl? It gives her the most beautifully defined biceps and triceps <laughs> of her entire third and fourth grade class. Thank you guys so much. My name is Soli Santos. One more big round of applause for Soli. Yeah. So here we go, y'all. Coming out, this is the end, and uh, your headliner this evening, you may have seen her on True TV. Uh, she's a stripper, she does hair. If you want an airbrush t-shirt, uh, these are <laughs> Get your nails done, get that husk on your feet buffed off. Uh, <laughs> she can do that too. Uh, a big round of applause. Ladies and gentlemen, coming to the stage, Lisa Laird. <laughs> Yes, tonight is so crazy.
crazy. Like, <laughs> it was so tough getting here because I don't know why I do this right, but I treat my 2016 Hyundai Sonata like my 94 Tempo. See, what, what happened was, it's like, you know, the gas hand on that car, you know, you know your gas, you know. You know you finna run out of gas, the gas hand, do this little thing right here. And with my new car, I do this thing, it's cute. It be like zero miles to empty. I'm like, ah, ah. If you can tell me I got zero miles to empty, you got gas stored in the back. I know this, I know this to be true, you know. But then I got my friends with me tonight because we was kicking it and stuff, right? No, no, no. I'm embarrassed as hell. Here I am. We got the music blasting. We are kicking it hard. We are vibing to the music. I'm like, oh! My car said, I was like, oh shit. My friend was like, ooh, girl, you running out of gas? I'm like, no, bitch, that's the bass. Hey! <laughs> All of a sudden, my car said, tch, 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 tch. I said, you know what? I probably should pull up into this BP. I don't know whose idea it was to build BPs on a hump like they don't know we running out of gas. <laughs> this is the most disrespectful shit I have ever seen in my life, okay? Here I am going up this hump. I'm tch, 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 tch. My car said, Phew. Roll right back into traffic. I'm embarrassed. Okay, here I am. I'm like, oh, shit. I can't even look my friends in the face right now because I know they got some shit to say. All of a sudden, a bitch in the back going to honk at me. BB, bitch, you see I'm out of gas. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't. So now I had to pray. I'm like, hey, God. Look, they said it was going to be a bunch of single eligible bachelors over at Can TV. So I done wore my best panty and bra set. Lord, these titties are sitting up half, Father God. If you could, just get me there on time. I would really appreciate this. Then all of a sudden, there was a little tap at my window. It was like a fairy crackhead, right? <laughs> he was right at the window like, Lily, you need a little help. I was like, I do, I do, I do, sir. He's like, well, it's going to cost you. I said, sir, look, all I got is a dollar. He said, that's it. And they pushed me to the pub. It was like him and another fairy. I was like, this is beautiful. I get out, y'all. I go and look. I am on the wrong damn side. <laughs> this me trying to get the pumps out of the stack, because I'm not getting back in the car and asking my friends for no kind of help. I'm... <laughs> I start praying again. I'm like, hey, God, it's me. I'm back. <laughs> M maybe I should have been more specific. Um, can you please uh, get me to the other side, the right side? All of them was a tap on my shoulder. It was my fairy crackhead father. He was like, look like you need a little more help. I was like, I do, but it's gonna cost you. I'm like, sir, all I got is what y'all? A dollar. He said, that's it. I was like, yes. <laughs> I still got here late. And I'm uh, looking around and I, I think the single bachelors, they promised me late too, so. <laughs> they owe me some money. <laughs> I'm like, uh-uh, this ain't what y'all said was going to be here. <laughs> I'm in this, this phase where I'm like dating in life, and I'm like, I'm really trying to be more open to the guys that I date. But I got, I got like high-ass standards. Like, I'm 5'4". I can't date no short-ass man. Like, I can't, I can't do it. I can't date no man 5'4 or under. Can you imagine? We both can't reach the fruit snacks at the top of the fridge? <laughs> How, sir? <laughs> this me and him. Come on, up, up, baby. Almost. God damn it. We almost had it all. Like, I can't date dudes that mama live with them. Can you imagine we having sex, making all kind of noise, and all of a sudden you hear, do, do, do. Y'all start making all that noise up there. That's embarrassing. <laughs> now I got to sneak out the house. I'm closing all the doors. <laughs> Fuck you, sir. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know who I can date? I can date a man who blow his soup. Think about it. If he not gonna burn his own self, guess who else he won't burn? <laughs> Me. <laughs> like I, <laughs> you blow your soup. <laughs> no, but seriously, like I was dating this one guy, I had made an exception to the rule. He had these little ass hands, y'all. And like, you know, men be real sensitive about their shit too. Like we be sensitive about our wigs, our lashes, our weight, you know what I'm saying? Dudes be sensitive about little shit like this nigga little hands. So <laughs> <laughs> he liked to argue though. And I used to, I really tried my best to like love him how he need to be loved. But when you push a bitch to the limit, everything is no holds bar. I'm saying everything I've been wanting to say. 
So we in the car arguing. He driving. He just going in. He going in. He was like, man, bitch, you better shut the fuck up or I choke your ass out. I was like, ha! <laughs> <laughs> I guess that laugh was a little too hearty. Because all of a sudden, this man's hands was almost, almost around my neck. <laughs> Y'all, I had to act real fast because I loved him. I was like, shit, bitch, you better act like you choking. I was like, ugh. <laughs> ugh. <clears throat> and then I passed out. I was like, ugh. <laughs> he was like, bitch, you ain't sleep. I'm like, oh, yeah, make sure we get home safe. <laughs> we broke up. <laughs> now he all on Facebook with this little neck bitch pissing me off. I am upset. <laughs> I'm like, oh, look at you. Mm, congratulations. <sighs> Anybody got kids? Oh, oh. Y'all out here making great decisions with your vagina. That's what's up. That's cute as hell. Oh my God. Congratulations. <laughs> here I am with proof I made a mistake. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's what's up. Fuck y'all. <laughs> y'all like most of my friends. These bitches ain't got no kids. They be like, bitch, you want to kick it on Tuesday? Hell no. I don't got no babysitter. Fuck you. <laughs> like tonight, <laughs> I tried everything to get a babysitter. I called her granny like, look, ma'am, can you watch my baby for like 16 hours? <laughs> I guess that was a little much <laughs> for grandparenting. And I'm like, girl, you went to grandmama school. You, you've been waiting your whole life for this moment. I guess not. She like, bitch, I'm going to the boat. I'm like, uh-uh, watch this. I'm like, she makes sandwiches. She 11. She's self-efficient and everything. What do you mean? No. So she in the car is what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> so I really got like five more minutes, I swear. <laughs> and like, this is a nice-ass neighborhood because y'all got like neighborhood watch that police just keep riding by. I'm like, oh, okay. Okay. But as a black mom, I was nervous. I'm like, okay, look, let's talk. If the police ride by one more time, what you gonna do? She was like, scoot down under the seat. I was like, yeah. I was like, and what else? She was like, put your jacket over my head. I was like, okay. Now I'm trying to see where she really gonna go. How far can you really go with this thing, you know? I'm like, all right, and what else? She was like, oh my God, mommy, don't fuck up the windows. I was like, don't give me no lips, show me how. She gonna say, slow, shallow breaths. Hoo, hoo. Hoo, hoo. I walked away proud to say like my nigga. I ain't know what I did. I'm like, I'm doing something right. <laughs> Parents are one on one, bitch. <laughs> oh, man. And then I don't know. I don't know if like she's a douchebag or like, because she's super smart. So I never know when I should beat her ass or maybe like give her a pass. <laughs> Seriously, maybe y'all can help. <laughs> like the other day, right? I'm in the kitchen cooking and I'm singing. And like the acoustics over my stove, especially when I'm scrambling eggs, make me sound like Mariah Carey. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm over the stuff. I'm like, ha, ha. <laughs> so she comes in the kitchen. She's like, hey, mom. I'm like, what's up? She's like, you should sing like Barack Obama. I said, how, um, how, how does Barack Obama sing? She was like, he does it, and walked off. <laughs> I was like, I'm going to beat your ass and send you to live with your daddy. <laughs> she don't even know, dude. <laughs> like, it's that real around this bitch. <laughs> Like, and he like, I hate deadbeat dads because they be like, everything I do is for my kids. I'm like, you ain't seen us since she was three. Shut up, stupid. <laughs> <laughs> like, and he did like this one thing, because you know, Facebook like to make up holidays, like Columbus Day, you know, stuff like that. <laughs> so they had made up Great Dad Day. He had made a whole moving collage, a banner and everything. Like, he had pictures holding my baby up, like Simba at the Pride. It was beautiful. <laughs> I am crying. I'm like, did you love her? Then I realized that was me in the picture. I'm like, how the fuck did you crop me out this picture like that? It looks so real. So I had reported it as child porn. I was like, <laughs> like no, nah, take this shit down. <laughs> you ain't going to keep doing me like this. Fuck. Nah. Then I like, I really hate this thing that women do when we try to ruin our baby daddy's life because they don't want to be with us no more. Like, 
He be a good ass dude. Take care of his kids. Do everything he supposed to. But he don't want to be with me. So now I be telling all my friends like, this motherfucker not shit. He don't take care of his kids. You should see the shit he do. Whole time he's sending like $500 plus diapers. Taking them shopping. Taking them to eat and shit. But he with a whole new bitch. No. You come fix your family. <laughs> come fix your family, sir. <laughs> so like, I be like, don't do that. Like, let them men be great with somebody else. But like, when I was running my baby daddy life, it was so warranted. <laughs> no, really, for y'all judge, because I was asking him to be better with me, and he gonna do it with a whole new young bitch. I'm like, first of all, I'm not even old enough to be left like this, you know? I'm upset. Here I am hurt. So he had this one friend, thought we should be together because we was together so long, telling me all his moves. I'm like, oh, okay. She like, girl, they going to the movies tonight. I'm like, to the show? She like, bitch, the movies. I'm like, who paid for the tickets? Him. I lost my shit. I'm like, he paid for movie tickets? So I pull up to the movie theater with my daughter, right? I'm like, listen, baby, we just gonna pop up on daddy and all I want you to say is, hey, dad, that's it. She's like, okay. Cause kids are dumb as hell. She don't know what the, she don't know what the fuck is happening. She's like, okay. I'm like, cool, she's my rolling. We gone. We pull up, he is walking into the movie theater. He's like in the back of this chick, she's in the front and they doing that little cute walk thing that they do when we want you to see us being cute cause we new and shit. They matching outfits like they at Great America. I hate them. I'm like, oh my God, oh, they gotta die. I pull up, I'm like, Scott, oh, you out here going to see movies with bitches. How come you don't take your daughter? My daughter popped up like, hey, dad. <laughs> he went to the aid office trying to get grocery money. <laughs> I'm like, shut up, security. Oh, you out here trying to feed bitches. How come you don't feed your daughter? <laughs> My daughter came in like, hey, dad. <laughs> it got so bad, I kept popping up at places. He went to church, he joined. He was standing there praying. He like, Father God, look, if you could just take this bitch out. Natural, <laughs> natural causes. Lightning, a bus, anything. It would really help. So I sat behind him. Cause you know, you can't be disrespectful in the house of the Lord. So I'm praying, I'm like, <sighs> dear big homie Jesus, if you could find me a good ass man so I can stop fucking with his dumb ass, I would greatly appreciate it. <laughs> My daughter popped up like, hey, Dad. It's <laughs> probably why I'm single, because God don't like ugly. Like, like the other day, I was at the gas station, and I saw this brother seeing me, so I did what I thought anybody would do. I act like I didn't see him, and I like pressed up the girls, and I did the walk. Ladies, y'all know the walk we do when we want him to see us, seeing him, but not to see we see him seeing us. I hit that shit. I was like. <laughs> he was like. Excuse me, beautiful, I just want to say, he is smacking me down, asking all the right questions. He like, you got kids? I'm like, not really. <laughs> <laughs> then all of a sudden, this hater bastard in my background like, Mom, can you please come pump the gas? I was like, what? I don't even know, shorty, that's crazy. <laughs> I turned around like, hey, you not trying to go to the father-daughter dance with me still, are you? This man might want to take you chill. Turned back around. My daughter leaned past me a little and was like, hey, dad. <laughs> Y'all, I looked up. That brother was gone so fast. I'm like, well, I guess he don't like surprise stepkids. <laughs> That's my time. Thank you so much. I'm Lisa Lair. One more big round of applause for Lisa Lair, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we'd like to thank you all for coming out. Uh, we're here once a month, uh, and the next show is December 16th, 7.30 p.m., right here at Can TV. Another big round of applause for all the comedians you saw tonight. <laughs> and keep that applause going for everybody back in the booth back there. We have our camera people, the lights, the sounds, the tech, all this brought to you by Can TV. So, hey, you guys have been great. Thank you all for coming out and braving the, braving the weather. I've been your host, Mars Timms. See you next month. <laughs>